Hello, I'm Dr. Rostenberg, and I want to personally thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and I will give my recipe for your healing process. Now, I wish we could achieve our results with just diet and lifestyle alone, but supplements really do make the difference. And to help you with that, you'll have an opportunity to order supplements at a discounted rate. We'll see you then. What you're about to see is a short video on oxalates. Now oxalates are not as well known as, you know, methylation or detoxification and other topics that uh, researchers like, like, uh, like myself and others uh, look at. However, oxalates are, are really important. They can create some significant health problems and they're going to make any methylation issue we have worse. Uh, so it's really in our best interest to understand what oxalates are and to make an effort to measure them with the organic acid test, that's, that's the easiest way. Uh, measure the oxalates and then come up with a treatment plan to uh, remove them from your body and to help your protect your body from this, from this toxin. So what you're going to see in this video is how oxalates in, are related to a improper gut function and how oxalates create kidney stone issues and osteoporosis issues, malabsorption issues, things that are very, very common in our society but aren't being well taken care of with traditional approaches. So that's what you're in store for today and stay tuned for the next video in the series where I will give you even more information about um, how oxalates directly start to impact the methylation cycle itself causing sulfate issues, B6 issues, and other things. So uh, without further ado, I will hand it over to the video and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, Dr. Rostenberg here. And today's video is going to be an overview of oxalates and how they relate to gut function, as well as how oxalates impact our kidneys. Uh, my future videos will get more in depth on how oxalates begin to affect our detoxification and methylation pathways, vitamin pathways, but for today it's really about where oxalates come from and why they become a problem. It's important to understand why. So oxalates come from healthy food. Um, look at this list. You're going to see fruits and vegetables and high antioxidant foods, foods that um, I would say for most people are very good to eat, um, especially the vegetable category. So how can a food that's good for you like kale and zucchini and um, you know Swiss chard and you know um, these other foods, how can these foods that are supposed to be good for you also have oxalates in them? Well it's just that oxalates are a, something our bodies have been coming into contact with for a very long time and we have the ability to take care of these oxalates uh, when they come in in moderate amounts. In other words, when our gut is working, our body can absolutely take care of the oxalate, no big deal, eat these foods, enjoy these foods, and you're going to you know, improve your genetics, your gene expression, improve your health and well-being on every level. I don't think that can be argued. But the, the important thing is to recognize that oxalates really are in a lot of foods that most of us eat every day. So if you're dealing with, a, with an oxalate problem, it's important to recognize where they're coming from. Now one thing you don't see on this list is meat. And at first blush, you might think, well, meat doesn't have any oxalate in it. And that's not entirely true. The animals which grow the, which, you know, we eat for, uh, for meat, many of them eat, eat plants themselves. So the, the animal uh, that we, you know, harvest for meat is going to have oxalates in it as well. This study from 2001 shows how the meat proteins in our diet getting, entering into the liver uh, produce an oxalate end product, um, whether from this top pathway, the bottom, or this lower pathway. And so you can see that, um, you know, oxalates also come from meat. So they're in our food. There's no way around that. Uh, we don't want to avoid food because it has oxalates in it. We want to make sure that our gut is working better so that the oxalates are not an issue. And we work on that with patients almost every day in my office uh, with really good results. So I want to share this with you so that you have a, a concept to understand how um, 
our body absorbs oxalates uh, under normal circumstances and under less and under circumstances when when there's a problem. So you can see this is the gut tube and this is the blood vessel. And so this is the oxalate basically floating free in the gut and this is the transporter on the surface of the lining the epithelial lining of the gut and that's how the oxalate is absorbed. These are the genes, so the enzymes that provide that absorption. However, it's important to realize that under normal healthy circumstances, the calcium in our diet is going to combine with the oxalate to form a compound that our body cannot absorb. Calcium, which binds to oxalate, uh, you know, basically prevents the oxalate from being absorbed into your body. Now the problem arises when there's a gallbladder issue and, and upper GI problems, which we see all the time. People have very poor stomach function, poor pancreatic function, and, and definitely poor gallbladder function. You'll see more studies here shortly that, that prove this point. But when our gallbladder and pancreas and is not working well, fats are not digested. Simple as that. Without healthy enzymes being released when we eat, to help break the fat down and absorb it, the fats will not be absorbed. So what's gonna happen is fat that's unabsorbed, the lipid, combines with calcium. And so now the calcium, instead of binding with the oxalate, is now bound to the fat. And now you poop out the calcium and the fat, two things that you actually wanted to absorb, and what you get instead is a higher amount of oxalates. This is the absolute most common reason why people have an oxalate problem. I have patients who've had five, six, seven, eight rounds of kidney stones. They're what are called idiopathic stone formers. The doctors don't know why they're forming stones. Well, about 80% to 85% of all kidney stones that form idiopathically without a disease are oxalates. They're oxalate stones. So this patient in particular has a very bad gallbladder issue that's been undiagnosed, which actually is showing up in the kidney first. There's a gut-kidney connection in, in our bodies and the oxalates help show that relationship. So one thing to be aware of, um, you know, we, we, if we have high amounts of vitamin C in our diet and you already have high oxalates, that may not be the best choice for you. So, you know, I'm a big fan of high dose vitamin C for lots of things, but if there is an oxalate issue, you need to be careful. Uh, the, this chart just shows a little bit of the genetic diseases that can interfere with oxalate formation, but even despite the genetic issue, as you'll see in my future videos, they're just taking the right amount of B6, a therapeutic level of B6, is, is able to overcome the genetic weakness and create normal oxalate metabolism. So, moral of the story here, oxalates go up in the body because of a gut problem. When you have a gut problem and your oxalates go up, you poop out your calcium and your fat that you need. So we're talking osteoporosis, we're talking neurological conditions, inflammation, brain degeneration because you don't get the omega-3s. I mean, that's important stuff. That's why we're talking about oxalates. Now, just to highlight the connection between gut and oxalate issues, is this is a study from way back in 1977. But basically, this is proving that after they've done uh, surgery on Crohn's disease patients to cut out part of their gut, they begin to have uh, you know, malabsorption. Their gallbladder's not working well. They're not able to digest their food after the surgery very well. And what they found was um, these patients actually began to have a high amount of um, you know, urinary kidney stones that were made out of oxalates. So they, make, they have a surgery in the gut, has nothing to do with the kidney, and then you know, all of a sudden you start to see um, oxalates building up and causing kidney problems. So um, we're going to keep going here and basically talk about another subject or another uh, research article here that's very uh, in line with what we've said so far. So it's interesting that um, after they've done bariatric surgery, another gut surgery, they also see an increase in urine calcium oxalate supersaturation significantly, and they see fecal fat going way up. So what they're telling you in the research is what I've shared with you already. When you cause a change in the gut and you make the gut dysfunctional so that it no longer works, 
and you can no longer uh, digest your protein. So just like I shared with you earlier, when you know the body cannot absorb fats because you have a stomach issue slash gallbladder issue and you've got that dysfunction in the upper GI tract that's so common, the fats combine with the calcium and you poop that out. So you poop out your essential fats, you poop out your calcium and other minerals that you need, and you start to absorb a very high amount of oxalates and they were able to determine this in a study. So after bariatric surgery, which is pretty extreme surgery, they saw fecal fat go up, they saw higher levels of oxalates in the urine, and you know, basically the conditions were set to have kidney stones, which you know, I've never had one, but I, can, um, I'm, I don't need to have one to know that they're, they're that painful and they're not something we wanna, we wanna experience. So another just piece of data, this was straight out of 2015, just a few months ago, um, just to kind of show you that most kidney stones that have calcium are actually calcium oxalates. So there's this absolute relationship between calcium, uh, you know, oxalate stones. So absorbing oxalates in your gut and having a kidney stone, it's a gut kidney problem. Idiopathic kidney stones, kidney stones for, for like no reason, you don't have diabetes, you don't have any other disease that would cause you to have kidney stones. Those type of people are having oxalate problems and it's coming from the gut. So another thing to keep in mind too, and we'll get into this a little bit, is that low citrate increases the chances for calcium to bind with oxalates. So this is one reason why uh, you know, we give calcium citrate to patients who have an oxalate problem. You get, a, you get multiple benefits from that, uh, but the citrate really helps to um, you can see here the hypercalciuria and the hypocitriuria. So in other words, the low citrate uh, in, the, in the urine is, uh, makes it more likely to form a stone. So again, we're gonna run through some more data. About 75% of all stone formers are calcium oxalate stone formers. So earlier I mentioned 85. Um, the data really uh, is more in line with 75%, but still that's uh, three quarters of all um, patients who form these stones are having oxalate problems and who's looking at their gut saying well how's their gut working is their gallbladder functioning are they pooping out a bunch of fat that they shouldn't be you know this needs to be investigated uh, on a routine basis and you can really help change people's lives and prevent them from having uh, to go through this kidney stone process so again just more data this is a, from a few years back um, you know hyperoxaluria a lot of elevated oxalates in the urine, which we test for routinely on our organic acid test and other tests we do in the office. Um, it's increased intestinal absorption. Boom, secondary to malabsorptive disease. All right, that is super, super important. This is what we need to look at with all patients who have high oxalates. You've got to rule out the gut problem because it's really, really common. Um, dietary habits, again, you know, high oxalate intake with low calcium intake is probably not as much of a not as common as the gut problem. And then of course there are some gut flora, um, certain gut bacteria can have the ability to degrade, um, to degrade oxalates. It's called oxalobacter uh, formagenes, basically. Uh, so there's an oxalobacter type of probiotic that breaks down oxalates. And, and if you have a healthy gut that's in there, it's functional. Um, so that does also help protect you. Um, just a little more information about oxalates cause a lot of problems for the kidney. It, it irritates the lining of the kidney, kind of causes leaky kidney. So you can get leaky gut and then you can end up with leaky kidney. Um, a lot of the same tissues in your body, your gut, your lungs, your kidneys, um, your blood vessels, your brain, blood brain barrier, if one leaks, the conditions are set for, for other parts of them to leak as well. They, they have so much in common uh, in terms of how they're structured that if, if you're having a leaky gut episode, you're very likely having a leaky brain and potentially leaky lungs and leaky kidney. They all have the same type of epithelial lining in there. So again, more studies, it's all about binding it with calcium, okay? If you can get your oxalates in your diet and in your gut to bind with calcium, then you will protect yourself from increased calcium uh, oxalate absorption. So 
We want to make sure that the calcium and the oxalate bind inside your gut, not inside your kidney. And that's, can, that can happen reliably with the right type of supplementation. You can check my website uh, beyond MTHFR, look under the protocols um, drop down menu and you'll see oxalates as a, as a page and it'll explain that for you. More data, again 80% of all kidney stones contain calcium oxalates. So 75-80% of people with kidney stones have an oxalate problem. It is the, you know, it's the ultimate driving force for stone formation. Okay, this is what causes these stones. Now I want to share with you something that's very interesting as we bring this to a close here. I've shown you how oxalates come from a leaky gut. I've shown you how gallbladder problems and surgery to your gut increase the chances that a patient will have a kidney stone. They definitely increase the amount of oxalates getting into the kidney. It's a gut oxalate problem. And, and given the fact that calcium forms stones and causes kidney stones, you might think, as I used to think, and many think still, that calcium is the problem and that avoiding calcium prevents kidney stones. And, and as many things are in the body, or just like other, just other aspects of our physiology, it's a, it's a little bit ironic. To, and, and the truth is a little bit ironic here. This research shows that the more uh, you decrease your intake of calcium, the less calcium you take in, the higher the rate of kidney stones. It doesn't make sense until you realize that eating more calcium with your food binds the oxalate in your gut and then prevents the oxalate from being absorbed. So the oxalate and the calcium have to bind. The question is, are they going to bind in your gut and you poop them out? No big deal. Are they going to bind in your kidney and cause a kidney stone? Really big deal. That's what we're trying to answer here. So if you cause a cal if you eat a calcium restricted diet, there is a higher risk of stone formation on a calcium restricted diet. It's in the research. It's a little bit ironic, but that's, there's always a reason why the body does what it does. And again, more data just saying increasing calcium while eating oxalate-rich foods prevents dietary hyperoxaluria and reduces calcium oxalate stone formation in healthy subjects. They took healthy patients, they gave them a high oxalate diet. They gave them a 20 fold, 20 times more oxalate load than normal. They gave them 20 times the normal amount of oxalates. If they gave them calcium at the same time, then the amount of oxalate in the urine dropped dramatically. It's just that simple, guys. So I hope this was educational for you. I hope you'll take some time to look more into oxalates. I hope you'll read my my blog post that's uh, you know published on beyondmthfbar.com and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm always here to answer questions and uh, help um, point you in the right direction. And stay tuned for the next videos in this series where we get a little more in depth on the methylation cycle and how these oxalate issues create some pretty nasty biochemical problems uh, down the road. And uh, so you don't want to miss that. Thank you so much for watching this video and sharing it with your friends and family. I personally believe, as I'm sure you do as well, that educating ourselves about what it truly means to be healthy is the only way we're gonna change healthcare. I have created a website as a resource for you. To take advantage of this information, navigate to www.beyondmthfr.com and take a look around. In addition to blogs and articles I have written, you will find a tab on the menu labeled protocols. It is a growing list of tools that I use in my office to help support my patients. You will find background information on common health conditions. You will find a detailed supplement protocol and you will find dietary advice to support the body's natural healing process. You will also have access to order recommended supplements at a discounted rate and have them shipped to your front door. I'm giving you the tools that I use and practice every day to help you overcome health challenges and live a happier, 
healthier life. I have done my best to give you that information and you will find it on these protocol pages. If you are looking for more help than simply what supplements should, should you take or what diet should you follow, I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you to come to Boise and see me. Let me and my team and my staff take care of you. We have patients coming from all over the country and all over the area on a regular basis and there's room for you too. Now if coming all this way to Boise is too big of a commitment, then please pick up the phone or email my office. We can work together from a distance.